while viewing a sitting of the House of Representatives or the Senate, you may have noticed someone walk into the Parliament chamber holding a metal staff over his right shoulder while announcing the arrival of the presiding officer. Either gold or silver in color, this staff is known as a ceremonial mace and its presence in the Parliament chamber symbolizes the authority and privileges of the House. The origins of the ceremonial mace date back to the 13th century when the mace was used as a weapon by a royal bodyguard to protect the king. The person entrusted with this responsibility was known as the sergeant at arms. Between the late 1300s and early 1400s, the mace became increasingly decorative and was adorned with precious metals. The civic mace, as it was called during this period, was no longer used as a weapon, partly due to the use of heavy armor becoming obsolete. Then, during the 14th, 15th, and 16th centuries, the maze underwent several transformations which changed its shape, style, and use. For example, the flanged end of the maze, the top end, which was specifically designed to aid the bearer in war, was replaced with precious metals. Today, the maze is used in many parliaments across the world and bears much significance as it did in the olden days. On the day of a sitting, the Marshal of the Parliament holds the mace over his right shoulder and walks ahead of the presiding officer at the start and end of a sitting. In the chamber, the Marshal announces the arrival of either presiding officer and places the mace on the upper brackets of the clerk's table, signifying the beginning of a sitting. There are a few instances where the mace is moved from the upper to the lower brackets or removed from the house. At the commencement of a new parliament, the presiding officer's chair is vacant and, as such, the mace is placed on the lower brackets until a new presiding officer is elected. The mace is also removed from the upper to the lower brackets when a sitting of the house has been suspended. After the debate on a bill is concluded, the bill is referred to a committee for consideration of its details. When it is sent to a committee of the whole house, the presiding officer must vacate his chair and sit in the clerk's chair. The marshal then removes the mace from the upper brackets to the lower brackets of the clerk's table. At the end of the committee stage, the presiding officer returns to his chair and the marshal replaces the mace in the upper brackets. Parliamentary practice dictates that no sitting of either house can take place if the mace is not present. Handling of the mace by someone other than the marshal or a person performing such a role in his absence while the house is in session suggests willful disobedience to the rules of the house. The mace which sits in the House of Representatives at the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago was crafted by silversmith Messrs. Garrett of England in 1899 and donated to the Legislative Council of Trinidad and Tobago on June 5, 1899. It is silver gilt and has a two-dimensional silver carving of the coat of arms to the top. Its knob or head is ornamented with carved motifs which depict the landing of Christopher Columbus in Trinidad. At the top of the stem are the words Legislative Council of Trinidad and Tobago, under which are the names of the 24 subscribers to the maze. When the country achieved independence in 1962, this maze was donated to the House of Representatives. 37 years later, in 1999, the maze celebrated 100 years. Upon the suggestion of the then leader of the opposition, Mr. Patrick Manning, the House Speaker, Hector McLean, authorized to have the names of all the members of the Fifth Republican Parliament engraved on the bottom end stem of the mace. The mace belonging to the Senate may not bear the same historical significance as its silver counterpart, but its relevance to the chamber is undeniable. In 1962, a committee was appointed to select the design for the mace. Local metal craftsman Ken Morris submitted designs for a temporary mace which would have been created for the inauguration of Parliament on August 31, 1962. After meeting with local artist Carlisle Chang, Mr. Morris and Mr. Chang submitted designs for the creation of a permanent mace. The decision was taken by the committee appointed to consider designs to hire highly skilled local artisans to produce the mace as it would be considered an incentive for other craftsmen. Unfortunately, discussions on the mace reached a standstill. In 1963, it was agreed to immediately purchase a mace for the Senate because of the dissolution of the Senate of the Federal Government, whose mace was being used in the interim. Finally, in 1966, 
Mr. Chang's designs were sent to Mrs. Thomas Fatterini Limited in the United Kingdom to sculpt a mace for the Senate. This mace is still being used in the Senate today. The design of the mace of the Senate was loosely based on the mace of the Parliament of Tanzania and adapted to local purposes. Its features include two copies of the coat of arms, a three-dimensional figurine at the top, and an engraving of the national emblem on its knob. The words Senate of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago are also engraved in the mace's knob. Four round panels along the stem of the mace depict the oil industry, the sugar industry, the cocoa industry, and the symbol of the local manufacturers association. At the top of the base of the stem is an engraving of the national flower, the Shaconia, and the Anthurium lily. The floron or end of the mace is in the shape of a cocoa pod. This mace is gold in color. Used as a weapon in ancient times to protect the king, today the presence of the mace in the chamber symbolizes the authority vested in the houses on behalf of the people of Trinidad and Tobago.